Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Kaczynski, and today we're going to demonstrate a atraumatic extraction of a non-restorable bicuspid tooth. You can see we had root canal treatment and significant bone loss around this tooth. So what we're going to do is use the golden physics forcep, which is a technique that we use to remove the tooth uh, without putting a lot of tension. The instrument had, consists of two components, a beak and a bumper. The beak is the working end of the instrument and engages the palatal aspect of the root, one to three millimeters subgingival. The bumper is not the working end of the instrument, rather it just serves as a fulcrum to allow us a center of rotation. So the beak is um, engaging and placing tension on the palatal aspect of this root. That tension is going to create a physiologic response which will create an enzyme which will break down the periodontal ligament. When the periodontal ligament is destroyed, the tooth will then disengage up and out of the socket. The instrument is not intended to remove the tooth in total. Rather, it's intended to luxate the tooth one to three millimeters. We'll then simply take a tooth delivery uh, instrument, um, a bird beak type of uh, instrument, grab onto the tooth and simply rotate that tooth up and out of the socket. The intent here is to maintain the facial plate of bone as possible and also the interceptal bone. The interceptal bone is what holds the interdental papilla in place. So we're simply able to remove a tooth atraumatically. In this situation, um, we grafted the defect after curetting uh, extensively. We want to remove any granulation from the site. We want to remove any dark blood, uh, purplish blood from the site. And then we're simply taking an osteogen plug uh, from Implodent and also from Gold Dent, Golden Dental um, and placing this graft material into the socket site. Um, the area will then be sutured closed. I have just two cross-linked um, um, vicral sutures, and you can see immediately post-operatively what this material looks like. Um, you can see that there is a little bit of radio opacity, uh, not so much at the apical portion, but this is going to fill in with bone over a period of time very, very well. A one week post-operative, you can see the epithelium is already granulating through um, and you can see just a little bit of the graft material still in place. After four months, you can see a definite change in the quality of bone present. The osteoclasts uh, eat away this material. It's a, tri um, a calcium and phosphorus in a bovine Achilles tendon matrix and you can see that the osteoclasts are actually um, eating away the synthetic material and osteoblasts are laying new bone. We now have a site that is acceptable for a dental implant four months after surgery. Here we're going to uh, look at the site, evaluate the site for our Han dental implant. A uh, VATEC CBCT analysis is done and um, it allows me to visualize the amount of bone that I have available in that site. And also, you can see the quality of bone. You can see how the site was grafted, and we do have formation of new bone over a period of time. So we can virtually place the implant using the software and determine which type of implant and the length and width of the implant that we potentially want to use. Now, in a two-dimensional determination of this uh, implant placement, I will simply take a uh, ball bearing of known diameter. We, we picked this up from Salvin Dental. Uh, the ball bearing is five millimeters in diameter, and we'll take some orthodontic wax, and we'll simply place the ball bearing in the wax and take a simple DEXIS radiograph. Um, at this time, we can then... Uh, just do a relationship. We can measure the diameter of that ball bearing using our DEXIS software, and I'm sure most um, radiographic software has uh, the same. We're calibrating the ball, so we're simply measuring the diameter of the ball using the software, and if the 
will ask us what the diameter of that ball bearing is. We'll say five. We'll say OK. Now we have a direct relationship. We'll then do a quick calibration um, of a single site. And we can determine how much vertical height we have. So I'm going from the crest to where I think the maybe the floor of the sinus is uh, potentially. And you can see we have almost nine and a half millimeters of bone available. One of the systems that I like to use for anesthesia is the Anutra system. And this is a buffered anesthetic system where it will take uh, conventional lidocaine and mix it with sodium bicarbonate. The reason our injections hurt so much, or one of the reasons why our injections hurt so much, is that the anesthetic is very acidic, like a pH of 2. And when we simply buffer with sodium bicarbonate, we can um, increase the pH of the anesthetic to physiologic uh, amount, which is 7.2. And this allows us to, um, to give a fairly um, innocuous injection, a uh, fairly painless injection. And I would probably say about 80% of my patients notice a difference. So here we're simply uh, using the instrument, clicking and uh, drawing out our anesthetic, our lidocaine and sodium bicarbonate. It's just a prepackaged system. We'll shake it. And then we have a disposable needle. And we will simply dry the site. And we're not going to block this area at all. I'm just going to infiltrate into the vestibule and kind of walk my needle up the ridge to the palatal. Here I'm just going to drip a little anesthetic onto the site. And you can see I use no topical uh, in this situation. Um, I will simply drip and wait about 10 seconds and inject. And about 80% of my patients don't experience any discomfort with this injection. I'm simply going to take my needle and walk up the ridge to the palatal area. And what I want to do is basically blanch. Now when I'm doing this too, I also want to look at the mucogingival line to see where the attached gingiva is. And here it, it's apparent that we do have plenty of attached gingiva on the facial aspect of the crustal ridge. Another uh, way of determining the amount of width that we have is the poor man's um, caliper. And we'll simply, after anesthesia, we'll just simply take this, this caliper and measure the horizontal palatal facial aspect. And here you can see we have nearly a centimeter of width which coincides very well with what we saw on the CBCT analysis. The Han surgical kit is just an exquisite kit. It's very simple. And what I like most about it is um, many, many other surgical kits that we've used have single burrs with marking on them. And I have found in my education that doctors often have a very difficult time uh, seeing the lines. And I always say in my lectures, I can teach you where the lines are, but I can't teach you to see the lines. So what the, uh, the Han system from Glidewell uh, Dental Lab has done is it's provided us a, a system of uh, pre-measured burrs, or the burrs are a different length and different diameters. So it's very exquisite, very precise. The Han implant itself is pre-packaged sterilely and uh, has all the measurements and uh, recording devices we have a, a torque wrench, a single handle torque wrench, which will measure the amount of torque that we will use in a certain situation. Here we're using a handpiece. I have many different motors, um, but in this system we're going to, to drill at 800 RPMs at 10 Newton centimeters. Here's a drill extension that will allow us to make our initial penetration using a uh, 2.4 diameter burr. You can see I've actually marked the, um, the facial aspect of the adjacent teeth. And this is simply giving me field goal posts to look at to help me angle mesial distally correctly. Uh, buckle lingually or buckle palatally, facial palatally, palatally we want to uh, place the implant uh, basically in the center of the central groove area. So I do use a marker a lot to help me in determining the correct position of the dental implant. After we have anesthesia of the soft tissue, I will simply take my 2.4 diameter burr, kind of lining up the field goal and simply penetrating through at 800 RPMs just to establish depth. 
I'm then still simply taking that, that burr out of the handpiece, and I'm going to take a digital radiograph, uh, stand up, look, look at the position, buccal lingual, and I'm looking at the radiograph and evaluating my position. I like the, the implant to be pretty much center, mesial distally, and I'm looking at the, the dead space or the dark space, uh, mesial and distal to that burr, and you can see that we're, we're fairly in good position. Um, it looks like we could have good emergence profile. You've heard me say that uh, implants today are prosthetically driven, and so all my surgical applications are intended to improve uh, or work upon the final smile, um, uh, smile design and emergence profile of that implant out of, out of the uh, set implant that's placed into the jawbone. So you can see I've just gone a little bit into bone and I'm happy with my angulation. I'm then going to take a punch and simply remove the soft tissue off of that, um, off of that crest of the ridge. And the reason why I want to remove this soft tissue is because with my, my other burrs, my longer diameter burrs, um, I don't, or wide, wider burrs, I don't want to um, place the, the tissue into the socket site. And so we're simply taking our punch and going to rotate a little bit and remove that soft tissue easily and cleanly. I'm taking a tissue forcep, and you can see we, we have a, a soft tissue tag. We have a nice clean incision. Now I'm going to widen the osteotomy with our 3.0 diameter burr, and these are preset 8, 10, 11 and a half, 13, 16 millimeters, and I can measure the soft tissue and determine the depth that I want to go um, into the bone. Uh, angulation has been predetermined by the 2.4 diameter burr, and to check it, again, I'll, I'll reset that pin uh, or reset that burr in the mouth and take a radiograph, mesial distally, buccal lingually, we look like we're in good position. And I'll simply take a radiograph to see that I am at the floor of the sinus. I'm looking at soft tissue. We have about three millimeters of soft tissue. And I'm simply going to widen that osteotomy site with the 3.5 diameter tapered burr. Again, we're going at 800 RPMs, and I'm going to the floor. I'm simply going to the floor, measuring again, taking a radiograph, and you can see I'm, I'm at the floor, what I consider to be the floor, but the burr is not completely at depth, which is, which is fine in this situation. I'm now going to widen to the 4.3 diameter tapered burr. And again, these burrs go very, very quickly. It's really a five-second procedure because all it's doing is widening that, that bone. And we're going to do the same thing, take a stop and take a radiograph to make sure we're in correct position. And look at the bone that's harvested from that site. Um, again, looking mesial distal, buccal lingual. We're right in the center of the central groove. We have good attached gingiva. And again, we're right at that floor, so I feel very comfortable. Now I'm going to place my, my implant, and I'm going to slow my speed down on my motor to 15 newton centimeters and you can see how slow that is. Now these implants are one millimeter longer than the drills. Okay, we, we talked about that in the lectures. And we're simply going to very, very carefully, very slowly engage the implant. And I want you to stop right at tissue level. We're not gonna go subgingival. We're gonna stop right at tissue level. Now we know the implant isn't completely seated, right? You can see that. But now we're gonna take our torque wrench and we're going to determine the amount of torque we have in this situation. Here it's set at 25 newton centimeters, and about one complete rotation, 360 degree rotation, or four quarter turns, we're going to get about a millimeter in depth. So this allows you to have really nice control and positioning of the implant. So here we're, we're, the, we're getting torque, so I'm increasing the amount of torque, and we ended up at 45 newton centimeters, which is pretty amazing. And you can see my position of my dental implant is right at the crest, uh, right at the floor of the sinus. We may have elevated that sinus floor slightly. Here we have a closure cap. And then because we got to 45 newton centimeters of torque, which is a tremendous torque, we can use a taller healing abutment. 
The healing abutment is a wonderful instrument because it eliminates the second stage surgery. It will allow the, it'll it, it penetrate through the soft tissue. The soft tissue will heal around it and will eliminate the need to expose the implant that we would have to do if we had placed a cover screw and the epithelium was allowed to regenerate over the top of the of the implant. So we're taking our healing abutment and you can see immediately post-op we have great attached gingiva, very little bleeding. The, uh, the healing abutment is just slightly um, above the tissue and the tissue is going to heal wonderfully in that site. Immediately post-op and post-operative radiograph shows a nice position of the implant to the floor of the sinus um, right at the crest of the ridge. Now we do have this machine collar with the Han system and that machine collar is a very important part of the system. Uh, Dr. Han, who created uh, several implant systems in his career, found that a machine collar allows for uh, biologic width to be established and if we do get some bone loss in that area, um, the soft tissue responds very well as opposed to um, to uh, having bone loss onto the the um, process or or um, or uh, roughened surface of the implant itself. So we will we will torque that healing abutment to 25 newton centimeters. That eliminates uh, it coming out of the mouth. Oftentimes, if you hand tighten, uh, the tongue will find that area and loosen it. Patients will call and say, "I lost my implant," but uh, obviously that's not the case. So if you're able to torque to 20, 25 newton centimeters, that healing abutment is not going to come, come off. You can see our post-operative CBCT shows really nice position of that implant in solid bone uh, at the floor of the sinus, and I feel very comfortable with our surgical application.